If you want to know how to record your electronic drums like the professionals do to get the highest quality sounds and be able to change those sounds after the recording is already done, then this is the video to watch. That's coming up. What's up? I'm Justin. Welcome to 65 Drums. If you want to keep on top of all things electronic drum related, then this is the channel to watch. Thank you so much for stopping by and think about subscribing if you enjoy this video. So today's a collab video with the channel Josh Cameron Drums. This guy knows his stuff. I previously did a video about six different ways to record your electronic drums, where I leaned more heavily on how to get the sounds from your drum module and use those sounds in the final recording. And I touched kind of lightly on how to record the MIDI data and use that with drum software. But in this video, Josh Cameron is gonna go in depth on how to record the MIDI data from your electronic drums and why that can give you superior results, even though it takes a little bit more effort, why that will actually give you the best sound in the long run. So here's Josh. Hello, and welcome to Josh Cameron Drums. Okay, so today I'm gonna to show you how to record your electronic drums the right way. So albeit the way you plug it into your computer, what you open up in your computer, and how you record the drums, whether that's MIDI, audio. Um, the one I'm gonna to show today will be uh, applicable to all types of modules. Um, so don't you worry, I mean, even if you've got like a low-end module compared to a high-end module, this way should work for everyone. So let's just jump straight into it. So the lead you're gonna need, that rhymes, the lead you're gonna need is a USB lead, right? So basically most modules have a USB in and obviously most computers, whether that's a Mac, whether that's a PC, should have a USB in as well. So therefore using a lead like this will be the most universal way to record your drums. Um, a lot of people use MIDI in and MIDI out, like the UM1 by Roland, but for me I find it's a bit unnecessary when you can get the exact same results from a simple USB lead. It's one connection into your computer and it works absolutely fantastically. So you're gonna need one of those. And next, of course, you're gonna need something to record into, so a DAW. Now that can be anything, that can be Logic, that can be Pro Tools, that can be um, GarageBand, any of those will work. Um, for this, I'm gonna be using Logic because that's what I always use. So yeah, make sure you have one of those on your computer. And finally, I'd recommend getting some sort of drum sample software. Now it's not absolutely essential, but if you wanna get the most out of your drums, I'd definitely recommend going for that because you can trigger real samples, uh, which you know, are real drum sounds as opposed to the sort of plasticky sounds you get from your, your module. Now I've got a TD30 module, um, I've played on TD50 as well, and I know that lower end modules, like a DTX400 model, um, module, sorry, um, the lower and roll and stuff, they do have really good sounds. However, if you're recording your drums along to, I don't know, a track for a cover or sending it to someone as a sort of, you know, a, a band clip to try and piece together a demo or something, for me, having authentic real samples is extremely good. Um, and the softwares aren't that expensive. So the one I'm gonna be using today is Superior Drummer 2. Um, I don't have Superior Drummer 3 yet. Um, <coughs> And the last thing you're going to need is a USB audio interface. Now, the one I'm using is the Scarlett 2i2 USB interface. Um, you don't need an interface really. I just use it to have as, as a sort of playback device, if you like. So your drums, no matter what, will be going straight into your computer, whether that's a Mac or a PC. However, I use the interface to listen to what I'm recording back through that. Um, I find it just finesses the whole experience, but again, not necessary, but it's nice to have. So the two ways you can record your electronic drums is via audio information or MIDI information. The way we're gonna to do today is MIDI, purely because with MIDI you can control the velocity. Um, they come out as individual colored notes on the screen um, and you can also quantize it. So let's say there's a snare here or a bass drum here that's out, out of line a little bit and go back and you can quantize that in post, which is absolutely fantastic. When you record audio information, unfortunately the sort of leeway to do stuff like that is a lot less. Um, but you can use flex time uh, if you are using Logic. I'm pretty sure you can do it on, on, on the other DAWs as well. Um, but yeah, so MIDI for me is the best. And when you're using Superior Drummer, your drums act as a MIDI controller. So you're not actually getting any of the sounds from the module. It's all coming from that software. So yeah, MIDI recording for me is the best when you're recording your electronic drums. As a quick side note, let me know in the comment section what drum kits you're using. I'd love to hear what you guys are using, whether it's Roland, Alesis, Yamaha, ATV, 2Box, etc. So yeah, let's create a discussion down in the comment section. So a really important thing to remember before you start recording your drums is to have your pad set up correctly with your module so you're getting the right performance out of the software. There's many videos online, my friend Mike has done one. Um, guys like V Drum Tips and Luke Oswald from Drum Angle, like they go through all of that in depth. So I definitely recommend checking out those channels as well. 
Um, but yeah, so having your drums set up perfectly will mean that you're getting the perfect MIDI information and of course the right triggering with Superior Drummer. So that is absolutely essential before you start recording. So what we're going to do is plug our electronic drums into our computer via the USB cable I talked about earlier. Now as I said before, I'm using the TD30 module and I'm also using the lovely DrumTech Diablo series kit and Silver Sparkle. Check those guys out if you haven't already, they make some really, really, really nice German quality electronic drums. So yeah, check those out. But yeah, most modules, from the beginner modules to the really advanced modules, will all have a USB in, which looks like a sort of Pentagon house, if you like. So yeah, you want to plug that end of the lead into your module and then the other end into one of your USB ports in your laptop or your computer. So what you're going to need to do before you actually get any signal showing inside of your DAW or on your computer, you're going to need to download a driver for your module. Now what a driver is, is it's like this small file which you download from the website. So if you're using a Roland module, go to the Roland website or type it on Google, for example, TD30 driver download that and then what that does is it helps the software recognize the module so that you can get a signal coming through inside the DAW. So that's essential. Now I'm not sure if you need to do that with Yamaha or 2Box or ATV or all those sort of brands but for Roland I know that you do. So first of all get that all downloaded and sorted out. Okay so when you open up your project you want to select software instrument because we're recording MIDI not audio so create that file and then from there yeah, to get rid of that then you want to go to your channel strip, reset it. And then from there, click instrument, go down to AU instruments, go across the tune track, superior drummer, and then multi output. Now from this point onwards, if your module's not already turned on and you switch it on, you're going to get a message pop up on your screen, which is going to look a little bit like the one about to pop up now, which would say, do you want to use the TD30 module? That's what I'm using. So whatever module you're using. Um, so here you go, TD30, do you want to use it? Click don't use. Um, and then I'll show you why. Because when you go to your file, or preferences of Logic, sorry, um, go to audio, you want to make sure that you have your audio interface selected if you are using one. Um, if you select the TD30, then essentially you're going to get all audio coming out of there. I mean, that's great if you've got it plugged in, your, your headphones plugged into your TD30, that is. Um, but if you are using the interface, then obviously make sure that's selected in your audio preferences. If you're going straight through the Mac, then make sure that you have the system setting set. And yeah, so I'm going to go and open a project that I've already been working on. Obviously, I do covers if you guys watch my channel. So here's me, well, one of my projects that's in the works or has been in the works recently. So if you see, I'll go to the mixer panel inside Superior Drummer. Um, you should have it with any VST. So just click mixer. And if you can see, all the microphones have been routed to different places, so different outs. So as you can see, if you click the drop down, that's out three and four, out five and six, and they're all done separately. What this means is that I'm able to control all of these channels, if you like, individually within my DAW, which essentially is how you'd record an actual drum kit. So you do that by clicking the plus and minus there. Just change the name of whatever you want. So as you can see, it's that easy to edit. Um, so I've got kick in, kick out, SD top, SD bottom, SD comp, etc. And then if you see, um, I can go ahead and I can solo a track or something. So let's say solo the snare drum, all, all, all three of those. And then if I play the project, you can see that you're getting all the signal just from the snare drum inside Superior Drum, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, you can do that with all of them. Um, and then obviously when you get more into your mixing and stuff, unfortunately this isn't a mixing tutorial, so I, so I don't really want to spend time to work, you know, putting reverb and sending stuff to buses and all that stuff. But yeah, so that's essentially how you do that to route the mics individually and actually get a decent drum recording, which is more so like recording acoustic drums.
Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to go check out his channel. He's got an amazing collection of really dope drum covers. He's got amazing editing skills, amazing drumming chops. He's also starting to do electronic drum tutorials as well. So if you like this channel, you'll probably like his. I'll leave a link to his videos in the description below. And also you can just type in Josh Cameron Drums into YouTube and you'll find his channel. Anyway, thank you guys so much for stopping by. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I'll see you in a few.